So hi, my name's Mel. I'm a yoga teacher based in Headingley in Leeds and um, I teach uh, various forms of yoga, um, classes on the mat, um, chair based yoga, uh, seated yoga, uh, so lots of different styles of, of yoga that I, I teach in different classes and I, I got to kind of know um, the guys at Your Backyard uh, through various projects, mostly teaching uh, chair based yoga to groups across Leeds. Um, lots of people who came to my classes uh, struggled with sleep and they all found that practicing uh, yoga regularly helped uh, with, with sleep and insomnia difficulties. Um, it also kind of gives you a resource, it's something that you can come back to each week or for some people each day and it just gives you uh, that little bit of structure as every day you know once a week just doing some yoga and before long you start to notice that it trickles out into other areas of your life so you might notice that you're starting to feel calmer or you're able to navigate challenges in your life a bit a bit easier a bit better um, so yeah so I'm going to be doing some seated and standing movement um, and yeah we'll leave it there so that's me thank you so hi uh, welcome to a standing chair based yoga uh, session with me Mel um, so in this practice we're going to do about half an hour of standing movement but we've got the support of a chair um, so it might be a practice that is beneficial for people who find it hard to get down to the mat um, or struggle with uh, kneeling postures on the mat. So it's all going to be standing. Um, please make sure that you've checked with your GP that you're safe to practice if you have any health issues um, or medical conditions. And there is an assumption that we are going to be doing some balancing practices, but there is an assumption that you are okay to be standing without being too wobbly on the legs, so that you're not, if you've had a history of falls or falling over, uh, then you know maybe not doing this, doing the seated one instead, uh, so that you're safe and secure on the feet. So only doing it if it feels right and you can be in standing comfortably uh, and a little bit of support from the chair. I'm going to start um, just in a mountain posture, so the feet about hip width apart. And just take your awareness down to the feet. And can you feel and sense the shape of the right foot? Does it roll in? Does it roll out? Can you feel the whole foot? Can you feel the toes? Can you sense the arch of the right foot? And then the same with the left foot. Does it feel different on that side? So, feeling the foot, the heel, the ball of the foot, toes, the arch. And allow the weight of the body to and drop down through the bones, through the skeleton, all the way down through the feet. So finding support from your foundation. And imagine all four corners of the feet are being suckered into the ground. And that will give you some lift up and some tonus in the legs without straining. Lengthen the tailbone down towards the heels and that might create some space in front of the hips with the hip points opening like eyes keeping the front of the ribs soft and softening the tops of the shoulders and then just bringing one hand to the belly lower belly and the other hand on top and your center point and relaxing the belly 
And just breathing into the hands and so connecting to your breath. If you can breathe in and out through the nose, then breathing in and out through the nostrils, but not needing to sniff the breath in intensely. Just being open to receiving the breath. And allow the belly to rise with the inhale and relax with the exhalation. Maybe slowing down the outgoing breath. Imagine you've got tennis balls underneath the armpits and that will give you some space in the shoulders. Notice if the backs of the shoulders, so the shoulder blades are pinching together. Allow the back to be broad. And the back of the ribs nice and broad. And then bringing the hands to the side ribs. And just allowing the breath to move the ribs. So imagine again, breathing into the hands. Allow the ribs to expand out, fan out as you inhale. Outwards and upwards. And relaxing, ribs just settling back in as you exhale. The breath can be very quiet, so it's quite subtle. Again, slowing down the exhale. And not forcing it, if you can't feel any movement in the ribs, just imagine it. Imagine the ribs lifting and opening, expanding out in all directions, and then relaxing inwards. Feeling how the breath moves the body. And then just lower the arms down. You can see I'm standing on my yoga mat. I've got a chair. I'm going to move the chair to, to the side. I'm standing to the right of your chair. And you might want to use a mat just so that you're nice and steady on the feet and give you that support. Right. And we're going to start by taking the awareness down to the feet and lifting up the heels and lowering down. Lifting up. And you've got that support with the chair. This is really good for the knees. So if you tend to have knee issues, this can help to strengthen the knees. Stabilise the knees. And you might take one arm up as you lift up and lower it down. Imagine you're being lifted up, maybe from the shoulders, like pieces of string floating you up and down. And just make sure that the the inner ankles aren't rolling in, or the ankles aren't rolling out, so you're nice and centred on the ankles. Uh, if you're comfortable to, you could try lifting both arms as you lift up and lower down. You might like to inhale as you lift. But don't get too caught up on breathing to my timing. You might take several breaths as you take the arms up. If you've got high blood pressure or heart disease, then just taking the arms to shoulder height and back down. Keeping the eyes steady, and that will really help with your balance. Keeping the head steady. And lowering down. Now you can still have one hand on the chair if, if you need that for support. I'm going to show you from the side what we're doing next. So we're going to still have the feet about hip width apart, but feel into it. If you need them a bit wider, that's okay. And we're going to bend the knees. The knees are tracking straight down the feet as though they're on tram tracks. And you're going to take the hips back like you're sitting in a chair. So the thighs are parallel. And there's a slight rolling in action in the thighs. 
and then coming back up and sitting back and keeping the spine long and you're not over arching or over rounding the back so spine is quite neutral and coming back up and combine that with the arms so taking one or both arms up if you just want to take one arm up you've got that support from the chair and then sitting back into your chair pose taking the arms up bending the knees the knees chucking straight ahead and sitting back lifting up and still imagining the feet are being drawn into the ground there's lots of strength in the legs and very light in the upper body and do that one more time and then sitting back and this time you might take one arm forwards you might take both arms forward so coming into that squat keeping the shoulders nice and snug in their sockets some people might extend the arms upwards and here you've got the option of lifting one heel and lifting the other heel if you at any point want to have a breather just take a pause and then just coming back up nice and slowly to your standing mountain. So anchoring down through the feet, lift and spread the toes, just wake up the feet and then lay each of the toes down on the mat, spreading them nice and broad. Shift the weight into your right leg. So imagine that right leg is being magnetized down through the foot into the ground. And we're going to lift up your left knee and lift the left foot away from the ground. Start to make some small circles with that left knee. And notice if you're kind of hanging out in this right hip. So imagine you could suck that right hip in and feeling some support. Okay, circling in the other direction and staying as light as you can in the upper body. So not tensing or straining. And then from here, we're going to turn the knee outwards so towards the chair. And you can either bring the heel to the ankle with the toes resting on the ground. You can bring the foot to the inside of the calf, coming into a tree pose. For some people, you might want to take the foot above the knee. That's fine, but not on the knee. So you don't want the foot to be on the knee. It's either above or below. Keeping the eyes steady. There will be a little bit of a movement. And you might want to take up that right arm and then lean over towards your left. You'll be doing that a few times. And keeping that arm nice and light and fingers nice and soft. This time, taking that arm up, coming into your side bend, and then coming back to centre. And you might stay there. And some people might want to have a try at lifting up the other arm. Maybe really sinking the left foot into the right side if it is above the knee, keeping the front ribs quiet. And then lowering the arms down and releasing the leg on that side. And from here we're going to, we'll do the same on the other side um, after a few movements on this side. Uh, so we will revisit the tree on the other side. But from here we're going to step back into a lunge. So step back with your left leg. And if you can have both feet facing to 12 o'clock. So some people have a tendency to turn that back foot out. 
Um, but you can end up with some twist in the knee with that, which we don't want. So see if you can turn the foot to 12 o'clock and then lift your back heel. So really using the ball of the foot and hinging there. Bending your front knee, so the front knee is lined up over the front ankle. Spread the toes, so the front shin is vertical. Right. And you might keep one hand on the chair. Lift one arm out to the side, and let's turn the palm up. And some of you might lift the other hand up. So coming into a lunge, drawing your front hip backwards a little bit with the front leg. I'm just going to breathe, keeping a lightness, the collarbones are broad, the back of the ribs are broad, and you can just stay here. You can, or some of you might even want to have a go at turning the head. This is challenging for the balance, so do go steady. And turning the head the other way. play with that not taking it too seriously so you might wobble a bit you might come out of the movement that's fine and then coming back to center lower the arms down and bring your hand back to the chair we're going to shift the weight into that front leg and step onto the tiptoes of your back leg so you're bringing the back foot forwards into the tiptoes and Sink the weight down through your standing leg. Imagine it's being really sucked into the ground. And we're going to roll the pelvis down towards the front thigh and see if you can maybe lift your back leg. Have a try. So some of you might feel more comfortable keeping the toes on the ground, that's okay. You might lift right onto the tiptoes and some of you might lift that back leg, keeping the spine nice and long. And you've got an option of taking arm out to the side, or you could take it overhead. Rolling the back thigh in and looking down so you're keeping the back of the neck nice and long. And with the leg, standing leg quite strong, we call warrior three, the variation of you need to stop, you stop, and lowering that down, and just coming back to your mountain, having a shake out, so shake out the arms, shake out the legs, roll out the shoulders, just feel into the body, notice how you feel, notice whether you feel any different on one side to the other. Tuning in with your breath. And then we'll go to the other side. So, so moving your chair to the other side of the mat. We'll do the same on this side. And starting in your mountain. So the feet are facing forwards, spreading the toes. All four corners of the feet being drawn into the ground. So rather than pushing the floor away, Imagine the feet have been sucked really deep down into the ground. And shift the weight into your left leg. Really allow that leg to find support from the ground. And then sinking down of the foot will bring some tone into the leg for support. And lifting up your right leg, right foot. I'm just starting by circling the knee round. The tailbone's nice and long, shoulders soft. And sucking the left hip in for support. Just oiling the hip. So just think of this bringing um, oil and lubrication to the hip socket. And you've done that a few times, turning the knee out. And you can bring the heel to ankle, the tree pose. You could bring the 
foot to the inside of the shin. Or for some of you, you may want to take the foot above the knee and just place the foot on the upper leg, inside of the thigh. So choose one that gives you a sense of grounding, of balance. Really finding support through your contact point, through your foundations. Keeping the gaze steady and focusing softly on one point ahead. And then take one arm up, the left arm, and just side bending over to your right, You're opening the side ribs. Bring it back up and lower it down. If that feels like too much, you could always just keep that hand on the hip. Breath nice and smooth and steady. Last time, into your side bend and then lifting the arm up, anchoring down through the foot and you might lift up the other arm. And softening the tops of the shoulders, keeping a softness in the fingers, in the jaw, the brow. And not straining. And lower the arms down, and lower the foot. And then coming back into your lunge on this side. So stepping back with your right foot. Bending the front knee. The knee over ankle, you're thereabouts. So the shins round about vertical. And your feet are pointing to 12 o'clock, lifting the back heel. Lengthen up through the crown. Connecting to the breath and taking the arms out to the side, palms facing up. You can have one hand on the chair if that feels better. And finding that steadiness. And you might want to try it, turning the head and just challenge the balance a little bit. So go slowly. If it feels like too much, you just keep the head in the centre. And lower the arms down. Shift the weight into your front leg now. So stepping the back foot forwards, coming onto the tiptoes. You need to find support through your standing leg. Notice if the ankle's rolling in and you're collapsing on the arch. You think of the arch being tented a little bit. And straightening the leg without locking the knee and rolling the pelvis forwards and allow the pelvis rolling forwards to lift the back leg. It might be a tiny bit. Some people possibly a bit more. And finding the shape and balance that feels right for you. So don't worry too much about what it looks like. Connecting more with how it feels. And some people might extend one or both arms forwards, lengthening through the crown. And lowering down. Coming back into your mountain. Feeling into both sides. And feeling the lungs expand in all directions with the in-breath. And relax on the out -breath. I'm bringing the chair in front now. Um, and you're welcome to have the chair on another mat if that feels more stable. Now we're going to step the feet wide apart. So bringing the feet wide apart and how wide depends on your dimensions and how it feels. So feel into it. 
So you still want to feel stable. I'm going to turn the toes forwards to start with, really sinking the outer edges of the feet down. And then from here, just sliding down to your right. And then coming back to centre and sliding down to your left. Allow the head to follow. So finding some space in the side body. And creating space in between each of the ribs. That will help with breathing. And then taking both arms up. And dropping your right hand down to the right thigh. And sliding over. Being nice and light and lifted. Lifting back up and lower it down. And same on the other side, so lifting both arms. And lower that left arm down. Reaching over with your right arm, sliding the left hand down the leg. Allow the head to side bend a little bit as well. Visualise the whole spine just arcing to the side. And then lifting back up. And lowering the hands down. And then from here, bring your awareness to the feet. I'm going to turn your right foot forwards and in a little bit. And your left foot out. The left foot out and you can keep hold of the chair with one hand. And bending that left knee so the shin is vertical. And taking the left arm out to the side. Just gazing over the left fingertips. Being a lightness in the upper body. Some of you might extend the right arm back as well. And now dropping the elbow down towards the thigh. The left elbow to thigh, either hand on the chair, or for some of you, taking that right arm up towards the sky. And gazing up to the right arm. Make sure this left knee isn't collapsing inwards. You might need to drop the left sit bone a little bit and really spread the feet. Okay, coming back into your warrior two type shape. And then lower the arms. And do the same on the other side. So the left foot turns in and forwards a little bit. The knee and the hip is also rolling in. The right foot turning out. And the bending the right knee so it tracks down the centre of the foot. The shin vertical. And notice if it's got this tendency to drop in. You might feel more supported if you really drop that right sit bone a little bit and keep the ankle from rolling in, so lift the ankle. And we said, turn the chest towards the front, keeping the lower body where it is. And I'm taking that right arm out to the side, turning to gaze over the right fingers and the fingers are soft. Some people might extend the left arm just in a long line. Really rooting and anchoring down through the lower body, and that creates a lift, a lightness in the upper body. And then from here, taking that right arm off, gazing at the palm. And some of you might hold the chair, some of you might take the left hand down the side of the leg. We're not straining in the neck. If it feels too much, then don't look up with the neck. And then from here, coming back to one or both arms extended. And then dropping your right elbow down towards the right thigh and taking the left arm up to the sky. Gazing up, or you can look straight ahead. Breathing and finding that 
Strengthen the legs in your foundation. And then lifting back. And lower the arms down. Turning the feet forwards. I'm going to now turn the chair towards you. And I'm going to show this from the side. So you're going to take the feet wide apart and have the outer edges of the feet parallel and really ground through the outer edges of the feet. So really sink them into the ground, lifting the arches a little bit. Nice and engaged through the feet. And tipping the pelvis forwards, keeping the hips lined up over the knees and the ankles, bringing the hands to the chair and leaning forwards, but without dumping the weight into the hands. It's the legs that are really active, the upper body is quiet, and some of you might bring the head down to rest on stacked fists. So I'm just coming into slight inversion. Resting the muscles in the face. Finding length in the spine. Relaxing the jaw, the fingers. And then just making your way back up. Pressing into the floor with the feet. And then just heel toeing the feet together. Coming back to your mountain. And then from here, just making your way down to sit on the chair to finish. You need to sit on the chair, feet flat to the floor. sitting on the sit bones to help lengthen the spine and then just coming into a rotation so turning the belly ribs and chest towards the right bringing the left hand to the outside of the right thigh and the right hand to rest on the chair behind take a few breaths here not straining with the neck and then going the other way and turning to your left, belly, ribs, chest. And bringing that right hand to rest on the outer left thigh. The left hand resting very lightly behind, so you're not dumping the weight into the hand. And relax where you can. And coming back to centre. And then just bringing one knee in towards the chest. Notice if you're rolling backwards. Just keep the body lifted. Breathe. And then the other knee in towards the chest. Lifting the elbows. And finding space across the collarbones. Then bringing the hands to the sides or the back of the chair. Sliding the shoulder blades towards each other. Opening across the heart. Finding space across the chest and gazing upwards. Not becoming rigid or stuck. So keeping a softness. And how it feels. And then just lowering down, releasing the hands, then coming back into one more rotation. This time, if you want to lift the legs, so just lifting your right knee as you turn to the right, left hand supporting the knee, right hand behind, resting on the chair. 
and lower it down. And going gently, not straining. You've had enough if you feel as though that's enough for you today, then you can pause and rest. And lifting the left knee this time, supporting it with your right hand. Breathing, soft gaze. And then coming back to the front. And sitting in your chair quietly, closing the eyes. Or just softening the gaze if you prefer the eyes to be open. And you might sit back in your chair, and keeping the feet on the ground if you can. And taking your awareness inwardly. Feeling the feet on the ground, the sit bones on the chair, all that support. Allowing softness into the muscles of the body, into the fingers, the shoulders. And softening all the muscles in the face, the jaw. Softening all the muscles around the eyes across the forehead. Just taking some quiet moments. Just checking in. Tuning in with how you feel. Connecting quietly to the body and the breath. And coming back to bringing one hand to the belly, lower abdomen and the other hand on top. And breathing into the hands. And quietly resting your awareness in that space, that area beneath the navel. Really anchoring, centering yourself there. Not trying too hard, not needing to make anything happen. Just letting go of any expectations or demands you might be placing on yourself. Just sitting quietly with your body and your breath. Lengthening the exhaling breath so that it becomes a little bit longer than the inhalation. The inhale rises naturally, and then just following the journey of the exhalation, allowing it to lengthen all the way to the end. Just the breath, lengthening the exhale that can be really helpful for some people for calming and quietening the system down, particularly the nervous system. And when you're ready, just bringing your awareness back to the room, to the space. Moving fingers and toes, opening the eyes. You might want to lick the lips or have a swallow. Again, can help to keep the system calm, quiet. Releasing the hands, you might want to have a little bit of a stretch out. Rolling the shoulders. Swimming the shoulders around. And then bringing the hands together, the left and right sides meeting. Awareness of the left and right sides coming together. 
taking a few conscious breaths quietly. Lovely. Thank you, everybody. We'll leave it there for today. Um, so thank you for practicing with me. And um, yeah, hope to see you soon.